up here in Vermont, the Ways of the Wild Institute. And uh, this is a uh, continuation of uh, my uh, medicinal series that I had going. And uh, standing here next to me is the tree I'm going to talk about today. And uh, first of all, by the looks of this tree, can you identify it before I tell you what it is? Well, of course, that's not going to work because it's already in the title of the video. Never mind. This right here is your uh, your black cherry, okay? Um, now your black cherry is a, a very widely distributed tree. It is native to uh, North America, and uh, you can find the black cherry growing from uh, southern Canada, Nova Scotia, all the way down to uh, boy, all the way down into northern Florida. Um, you can find it growing out to um, Texas, uh, North Dakota. So it's got a pretty good range, and it's a uh, it's a, a gorgeous tree. Uh, it's one of the uh, the densest hardwoods. All right, uh, the the inner wood of the cherry is a nice, nice warm, rich reddish brown color. And these trees can grow all up to uh, 90. I've seen them 100 feet tall before. Uh, just gorgeous, gorgeous, full of trees. And you'll notice, and we'll get uh, closer here in a minute, but you'll notice that the, uh, the bark on the cherry is heavily plated, okay? It's got many plates overlapping, and it's, it's really an easy tree to identify once you, uh, once you get an eye for the, uh, the texture of the bark itself. I want to talk about the medicinal quality of the, uh, the cherry tree because over the years, I've, I've met a lot of people with a lot of conflicting ideas about the cherry. People who haven't really studied and, and really don't know the cherry, they just have an idea of what it's used for. Um, but the cherry tree is something that you really want to know what you're doing with, okay? Because it can be highly medicinal and it can also be highly poisonous. So uh, let's get a little closer to the cherry tree and start to uh, discover what it's all about on this uh, snow flurry October day. Kind of chilly out today. Winter's coming quick. A little bit closer here. Now you notice that it's heavily plated. See that? Very textured, overlapping plates. And underneath the, uh, the bark, the underlayer of the bark, is uh, a reddish color. And you can see that here, a little bit of bark was uh, scraped off. So the inside of this bark of the cherry tree is very similar to the color of the wood on the inside. Nice deep reddish brown. Here's your leaf of the, uh, the black cherry. Alright, you can see it's smooth and glossy. Top and bottom. It's got a strong prominent vein in the uh, the middle there. Now while these leaves are on the trees that vein can contain some uh, very small white hairs but the rest of the leaf is smooth. And you'll notice there's a light serration on the edge of the leaf. Not much but just a light serration. And they can be a little bit fatter like this or like the neighbor here, a little bit skinnier, all right? But these come from the same tree. Unlike the pin cherry, which is a long, slender, uh, more coarsely toothed leaf. And here you can get a distance shot of the tree. Now it's important to note that the cherry tree, oh uh, boy, April to June usually will uh, We'll end up getting long clustering flowers ranging from white to uh, pink depending on your location and what's in the soil. And they have a very very strong smell to them. A uh, very pleasant sweet smell. And uh, in the late summer in the north country you'll find that uh, the fruit falls all over the, uh, the forest floor and uh, pretty much litters the forest floor with the, uh, the black small cherries um, about the size of a large green pea. 
And of course the cherries are edible. The flesh around the seed, not the seed. The seed is not edible. So don't try uh, pounding the uh, cherry seeds to make flour. There's another view of the bark. Excellent example of how it's heavily plated like that. Now it's the inner bark that's traditionally used as medicine. Okay, still today it is. It's been used for uh, as long as Native Americans have uh, occupied the uh, um, northern hemisphere here in America. Now the inner bark is, um, uh, is really uh, pleasant smelling, very strong. Uh, you'll get a lot of people who will uh, who will chip the inner bark and uh, put it in their drawers and stuff, kind of like cedar because it smells so nice. Um, now, yes, traditionally uh, it's been used in um, uh, cough syrups. It's it's exceptional for uh, for coughs and uh, flavoring. Uh, some normally pretty harsh tasting uh, cough syrups, depending on the herbs you're using. Um, so it's been used uh, a lot in uh, kids' medicines. Uh, since kids have a hard time stomaching a lot of uh, strong tasting stuff. And uh, the, the tea from the inner bark, all right? You take the inner bark and again you break off the outer bark and you, uh, you peel the sap layer on the inside and uh, you make a tea. Now you don't want to make this tea very strong because it is a very potent medicine. But since it is a bark, you do want to boil it, all right? You don't want to just uh, let it steep like leaves and flowers. And as far as how long you boil it, it depends on the condition and the constitution of the individual that you're treating, all right? This, this is medicine. This isn't food. This varies dramatically from individual and to individual and condition to condition, all right? This is usually only something that I teach face to face because it is very precise. However, generally speaking, the tea from the inner bark of the cherry has been used to treat sore throats, uh, colds, uh, fevers. Um, it's really good for uh, bronchitis, pneumonia, um, even uh, diarrhea and, uh, and lung ailments, uh, things like that. Um, it's, it's very well known for treating all of those conditions. Um, now interestingly enough, as it treats all of those things, it's also um, good for increasing the, um, the circulation in the body, mainly in the upper body. You won't find cherry being very effective for increasing the circulation through the legs, more in the upper uh, burner. Uh, location if you're into uh, Chinese medicine, so the uh, the upper chest location. Uh, you can also find this uh, to be beneficial for uh, circulation through the arms as well. Uh, I do notice that the uh, the upper burner circulatory system also uh, seems to be directly connected to um, the circulation of the arms, um, even down through the hands. And yes, since the black cherry is used so much for uh, coughs and things like that, and colds and fevers, uh, it uh, becomes obvious that the black cherry is an expectorant, okay? Now, what we need to understand about the black cherry, and I almost put this in my poisonous um, plants series, is that the black cherry does contain um, something that is called prunacin, and prunacin is it's a glycoside that is very much cyanide-like in structure. Now alone, outside of the body, this is uh, not poisonous. In other words, you can get it on your skin and it's not going to do anything to you. All right. The only time it becomes dangerous is when you decide to ingest it. Once it's ingested, it turns into uh, a, an extremely uh, toxic chemical uh, known to us as uh, hydrocyanic acid. Um, this 
This is what ends up poisoning us uh, and is commonly known as uh, cyanide poisoning. This is found in the cherry tree and you can find this um, you can find this in the inner bark, you can find this in the twigs, in the sap, you can even find this in the leaves. You can find this, uh, this chemical prunacin in the, um, uh, the seeds of the cherries themselves, okay? This is something that even in small doses can build in your system. And over time it will build up to a toxic level. Or you can just go after a straight dose uh, from the bark or mashing up the seeds to make flour and poison yourself that way. All right. There's been a lot of children who have been poisoned by this um, because they ended up roasting hot dogs on a green cherry stick. Now, something that we should naturally ask is uh, the cherry tree, the black cherry, the wild cherry, goes by both names. Is this pronacin more pronounced in one season versus another? Okay, because we have to ask, well, this tree has been used medicinally, you know, with wonderful results for thousands and thousands of years. So how in the world can this, uh, this toxic cyanide-like compound be present in the tree all the time? Now, yes, it is present all the time, but the dangerous levels of pernacin in the black cherry are most prevalent in this season right now autumn okay in the fall of the year is when this chemical in the tree is highest this is the time of the year that you do not want to harvest anything from the cherry tree for use as medicine um, the best times to harvest the cherry are in the warm season so spring and summer these are excellent times even late winter uh, is a fine time but right now, in the, in the entire season, uh, season of autumn, and usually with the cherry tree, the pernacin begins to increase uh, when the temperatures in late summer begin to drop, okay? When the nights start to become cooler. So after the, uh, the tree bears fruit and begins to drop fruit, and those nights start to cool down a little bit, the chemical compound and structure of the tree begins to change, the pernacin builds up, and the cyanide-like compound becomes most prevalent in the tree. This is the time of year you need to avoid the cherry tree for medicinal use. Um, then once the sap drops in the tree later on in the autumn and really gets back down into the roots deeply, then the compound, the, the structural compound of the tree begins to once again change. And as the winter progresses, as the winter really comes on, and by midwinter, the chemical structure of the tree has once again changed and the tree becomes more usable for medicinal uses to the human. So this is a little bit about the black cherry and the medicinal uses of the black cherry as well as the poisons of the black cherry. Right? Very important to remember the seasons, what's medicinal on it, what you should avoid, when you should avoid it, um, because this is a tree that, again, it can both heal you or poison you. So be aware and be safe. If you want to learn more details on medicinals and exactly doses and, and how to really build up in your knowledge on this, come and see us up here at Ways of the Wild Institute. Again, this is White Wolf. Thanks for watching. Willem Allison. Be well and happy.